Hey guys, my name is Caitlin Bracknell and I decided to focus my research presentation on German Expressionism. And to begin, I will share my sources with you. Crash Course German Expressionism Film History Number 7, the Museum of Modern Art German Expressionism, the University of Maryland's University Library Lib Guide, the Art Story Modern Art Insight in a Modern Video Essay of No Film School Productions German Expressionism Explained. After Reinhardt's final years of Hitler's rise to power and him being forced to give up his German theaters in 1933, other directors advocated a new mode, Expressionism. Expressionism first gained currency in France around 1901 and used to describe the type of painting done by Van Gogh, meaning art that was meant to capture the appearance of objects as seen under a certain light at a particular moment. In contrast, Expressionism was thought to project strong feelings into objects and portray them as modified and distorted by that particular painter's own vision. When you think of World War I, you might think of chemical weapons or trench warfare, but the war's effect on global film history was deep and powerful. Before the war, film in Germany mainly focused on cinema of attractions, spectacles designed for entertainment. It didn't take much for Germany to realize that their film skills weren't quite up to par with the US, France, or England. But with their loss of the war, Germany was left with a huge infrastructure for film production and distribution that grew during the war, while the rest of the economy went into freefall. So by 1920, Germany had the only film industry in the world able to compete with Hollywood. A little studio named the Cabinet of Dr. Caligari created a film that would change history. It used mise-en-scene expressionistically rather than realistically. They deliberately distorted everything within the frame, designed to look almost artificial and almost mind-boggling. It was the heart of German expressionism. It used to reflect the inner psychology of the characters. It's the world's first taste of highly subjective film making as well. Although Caligari wasn't a huge hit, its influence was highly effective. Other filmmakers picked up its techniques, even the UFA. The UFA, being the largest film studio in the world at the time, even started to borrow its style. It attracted young filmmakers all over Europe, including Hitchcock. Then as Germany took a hard right toward fascism, many German filmmakers fled to New York, London, or Hollywood, taking the German Expressionism techniques with them. It began to have a deep influence in all sorts of film works. Metropolis by Fritz Lang borrowed heavily from Caligari's mise-en-scene. Lang's masterpiece, Metropolis, a sci-fi futuristic story, was a precursor to Blade Runner and even The Hunger Games. Tim Burton was also highly influenced using mirrors, large shadows, and optical illusions. Strange worlds are created through a purely subjective eye. F.W. Murnau, another influenced filmmaker by Expressionism, wanted to make a version of Dracula, but couldn't afford the rights to his book. He ended up kind of fudging it, but him doing so created his own version, the classic Nosferatu. American film studios eventually took over with Hollywood films, but German Expressionism will always have a long-lasting influence. It will live on forever. The German Expressionist movement was more than just a style of creating works of art or telling a story. Rather, it was more of a mindset that had social, cultural, and political aspects. German Expressionism can be understood as a means of approaching life and, in particular, change. A number of Expressionists shared the belief that literature was capable of affecting profound changes in society. It frequently focused on the individual and his or her role in the story being told. The expressionist sought to arouse man against his temporal masters by constantly reminding him of his inalienable humanity. In part of a reaction against Impressionism and academic art, Expressionism was inspired most heavenly by the symbolism currents in late 19th century. Van Gogh, Monk, and James Ensor, Ensor proved very influential to the Expressionists, encouraging the distortion of form and the deployment of strong colors to convey a variety of anxieties and yearnings. The classic phase of the Expressionist movement lasted 
from approximately 1905 to 1920 and spread throughout Europe. Its example would later inform abstract expressionism and its influence would be felt throughout the remainder of the century in German art. It was also a critical precursor to the neo-expressionist artists of the 1980s. My personal favorite fact about expressionism was how when peace came, expressionism flourished, but not long afterwards, despite the end of the war, optimism soon gave way to disappointment. By 1924, expressionism was virtually dead. This shift from optimism to pessimism is especially evident in the works of Kaiser and Toller. And lastly, I stumbled across an interactive website, the Museum of Modern Arts, AKA the MoMA in New York City, has a section based solely on German Expressionism. Their website is dedicated to the museum's rich collection of German Expressionist art. It has an extraordinary collection of more than 3,000 Expressionist prints, drawings, paintings, sculptures, illustrated books, and periodicals exploring the various artists, themes, and techniques associated with the major modernist movement that developed in Germany and Austria during the early decades of the 20th century. On this website, you can go in chronicle, chronological order of each piece with extensive background information on each artist and go by the themes which are divided into nudes, portraits, nature, city, life, dance, and leisure, sex, fantasy, literary subjects, war, post-war, politics, religion, death. <laughs> I really liked this website. I found it really informative and entertaining to have the visuals right in front of my eye and getting to click on each piece of art and getting the background information. And I just visited the MoMA last summer. And I wish I had known to look out for these beautiful pieces of art because they're stunning. So all together, I hope you took something or learned something from this video about German Expressionism. And thank you so much for watching. In part